PD. Recently, in my role as the chair, uh, vice chair of the All Party Group on Smoking and Health, I visited one of the uh, smoking cessation services. It's the one led by Louise Ross in Leicester. The team in Leicester have been trailblazers in the use of e-cigarettes for, uh, for cessation purposes. They told me that Leicester Stop Smoking Services was the first in the country to go e-cig friendly on No Smoking Day in 2014. Since then, the team has built up a comprehensive bank of knowledge and insights, developed from many discussions with both vapors and smokers that can be drawn on to help people get the best advice when they've decided that they've had enough of smoking. And I have to say, I did have a discussion with a nurse who works in that service, who was working with e-cigarettes and pregnant women to, to try and get rid of those awful uh, statistics that we have with uh, the effect of smoking in pregnancy as well. Uh, most smoking cessation services could do, do worse than to talk to Leicester about exactly what they are doing uh, in terms of that. Clearly, there has been a significant increase in e-cigarettes usage since the publication of the previous 2011 strategy, there were some 700,000 uh, e-cigarette users in 2012, rising to 2.8 million in 2016. There is growing evidence supporting the successful use of e-cigarettes as a smoking cessation aid. In 2016, o ONS data found 470,000 people were using e-cigarettes as an aid to stop smoking, while an estimated 2 million had used these products and completely stop smoking. I believe these products played a huge part in beating the target in the last tobacco control plan. Clearly e-cigarettes don't suit everyone and there still needs to be a wide range of licensed stop smoking medication to use alongside much needed behavioural support. I'm careful of him giving away and uh, he talks about e-cigarettes and 4,000 people in my Stockton North constituency used them as opposed to 14,000 who still smoke. Can he envisage the day when they will actually be available, e-cigarettes available on prescription, as other products are? I actually had this conversation in Leicester. It wasn't something that I was going to put in my speech, uh, because there is an issue, and I think it was in a, uh, one of the National Newspapers' columns many, many months ago, and I tried to avoid it. Actually, if, if somebody in the National Health Service avoids paying 20 or £25 pound a week for cigarettes, uh, should they, if they're eligible, to have free prescriptions to help them do that? There is a debate there. I say no more than that at this stage. What Leicester said, because I pose that question to them, you know, is should it be if they're eligible for free prescription? They said, well, there might be a case for looking at it uh, for a month to break somebody away from the cigarette smoking habit to get onto that. Now, we'll leave that for, for the purpose of this debate wh where it sits at the moment. There may be a case for that. We clearly need more evidence and more use of them in smoking cessation, so we we're, were able to make that uh, estimate a lot better. On that one, I, I, I would, yes. Yeah. Tim, wanting to part the issue of whether or not e-cigarettes should be available on prescription, but does he think that e-cigarette manufacturers should have a little more freedom than they have already to tell people about the nature of the product and how it can help uh, people switch from t tobacco, given the restrictions that exist on the advertising of e-cigarettes so through the Tobacco Products Directive? I, I will uh, mention that very briefly. I, I understand. I know other people want to get involved with this debate, but the, the simple answer is that that is another issue that needs to be addressed along with others. But it is quite clear that e-cigarettes don't suit everyone, and there still needs to be a wide range of licensed stop smoking medication. Whilst the best thing a smoker can do, of course, uh, for, for their health is to quit smoking altogether, it's clearly the case that e-cigarettes are significantly less harmful than health uh, than smoking tobacco. Public Health England found e-cigarettes are around 95% safer, uh, uh, less harmful than smoking cigarettes. And uh, My own instinct is it because the 5% has not yet been tested long enough to be able to say there's no danger or little <laughs> danger there uh, at all. Uh, there is no evidence that e-cigarettes act as a smoking gateway for children or non-smokers, but research is still needed on their long-term use, and that's something that needs to be going on. Quitting smoking is always best, but there is a clear hardcore of smokers who, so far, have struggled to quit. Uh, these need to be the people we focus on. It is very worrying that an ASH survey found that over a three-year period, the number of people who thought e-cigs were as, as, a, as or more dangerous than cigarettes has risen from 7% to 26%. And this is why we need to have government-funded research in this area, because in my personal view, 
that that is an absolute why that statistic is moving that way and not the other is just an incredible statistic but of course the debate around e-cigarettes has not always been very clear i have to say both in this chamber and elsewhere there are also other innovations to continue this nicotine revolution manufacturers are developing additional smoke-free products to persuade he these heavy smokers who would not otherwise quit smoking to switch to smoke-free alternatives. One of these is the heated tobacco that's come on scene in, in the last year or so. Referred to within the novel tobacco products category of the uh, tobacco control plan that we're talking about, these products could be the next step to reaching those hardcore smokers who, though they didn't get on with e-cigarettes, are looking for another way out of smoking. I was pleased to see in the Tobacco Control Plan that the Public Health England will continue to lead in investigating the use of novel products as stop smoking tools, with evidence updated annually and the PHE acknowledging that they are currently the most popular aid to stopping smoking in England. I know many are very wary of these so-called novel products uh, and the fact that many are produced or funded by tobacco companies. But, and we must recognise that tobacco companies have been extremely dishonest in the past about the harms uh, of smoking, the products that they've sold. So there is an urgent need for more research into these devices and I hope the government's annual review will help provide information on this. And I have to say this is someone who's been anti-tobacco over many, many years, over two decades in this house. Just because they have tobacco connections, we should not ignore the potential benefits for people who have not been able to stop with more traditional smoking cessation products. And I think it's vitally important that all of us change our mind onto the reality of getting people off this uh, uh, habit that is, is still uh, killing uh, shorter lives for over nearly 100,000 of our fellow citizens every year. Many of these products are covered by the EU Tobacco Product Directive, and whilst this has done many good things, including establishing uh, reporting and notification requirements for t tobacco products, Stakeholders have raised issues about some of the other requirements and we may be able to use Brexit as a chance to look at this directive. I understand they were thrown into the TPD at the last minute and we've had this debate. I don't want to bore anybody with it. We won't need to move on from here. That's, that's what happens sometimes in politics. What we need to say is what should be happening now and what should be happening in the future as far as our fellow citizens are concerned. Uh, this should, I, I think this any work that's done around changing the TPD. Brexit is coming along now. Uh, and we should not be tied into that. I don't know timetable. Well, I don't know the timetable for Brexit at this stage, uh, potentially for, for debating any further than we have done up to now. Uh, but it's quite clearly that if there is a discussion about this and the change in, in, in the uh, TPD as far as the United Kingdom is concerned, we need to make sure that all stakeholders are in working groups to design and a directive that works for the good of the United Kingdom, taking into account many of the things I've just said. For all of its positive, uh, positives, the Tobacco Control Plan has a, a glaring issue, and we all know what it is, and that's money. While not short on lofty ambitions, local authorities are facing huge strain and won't be able to deliver the kind of joined-up smoking cessation services that the Tobacco Control Plan deserves. But luckily, you know, that there are people that can help. Tobacco companies have made a fortune selling cigarettes. You might well argue that they've got us into this mess uh, that we're in now. And it's only right, I think, that they should get us out of it as well. And they have the resources and customer base to help smoking cessation tools get straight to the people that need them most. And if the industry is willing to commit to a future based around e-cigarettes and other reduced harm products, we should take them up on their offer and allow government and local authorities to partner with them for the financial and technical help needed to help smokers quit. Now, I wouldn't have said that statement five years ago, uh, but we didn't have these things around five years ago that quite clearly can help a, a lot of our fellow citizens get off this, uh, uh, this potential... Uh, 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 yes? I'll give the way. Um, it was remiss of me not to pay tribute, Madam Deputy Speaker, for all the work that he, in fact, has done on this uh, subject in recent years. But I wanted to give him the opportunity to talk about people with mental health uh, conditions and the fact that the Tobacco Control Plan emphasises the need for parity of esteem similar to, uh, in similar ways with people with mental health and the general population. But that means that uh, professionals actually trying to work with people with mental health need the expertise and the, the education 
education to do that? And would he join me in encouraging the Minister to step up education for mental health professionals so that they too can be part of the campaign to help uh, such people uh, quit smoking? Well, I would indeed. I, I want the use of uh, e cigarettes in institutions where people with mental health problems or in prisons could do a long way to evaluate the problems that we have in these types of institutions. When I was chairing the Health Select Committee look at smoking in public places back in 2005 6 uh, we saw a situation there where tobacco was effectively used as a form of control inside the institution, knowing what damage it was doing to the people that were in there. Uh, and I know that a lot of institutions have moved on now, uh, and, and are looking at it. This is a matter for the Minister for Prisons, not for the current Minister, but we need to be looking at the availability of e-cigarettes in these types of institutions to be able to get people away from this life-threatening thing that uh, there is. My mother started smoking in an era where the health consequences were not known. I saw my mother struggle, desperately trying to give up. My dad used to describe that time when I was a child as some kind of character chore, with my mother wearing the anti-smoking patch, smoking the cigarette whilst chewing the anti-smoking chewing gum oh, and seeing the hypnotist. <laughs> she simply tried everything and all it did was mean that she tried even more. All the hypnotist did, in fact, was manage to get her onto menthol cigarettes and have a fear of hypnotists. So that didn't quite go to plan. <laughs> This taught me that to break the cycle, you really need to kill it at the root and prevent people from smoking in the very first place. I must add, though, that my mum has not smoked a cigarette for seven years. Hey. And, yeah. hey. and instead, she now has e-cigarettes. This cannot be seen as the answer, but it is very much part of the solution, which I'll get to a little later on. As I alluded to before, perhaps the section that will prove the most successful of the plan is the backing of evidence-based research into e-cigarettes. And the Honourable Member for uh, Rob, Rob Valley referenced before that it is the first plan to actually reference e-cigarettes. In 2016, it was estimated that 2 million people had used e-cigarettes and completely stopped smoking, whilst a further 470,000 people were using them in aid to quit. There has been a great deal of debate and discussion over e-cigarettes, the pros and the cons. So what is needed now is evidence to support them and enable their use positively. They are not risk-free and they are addictive, and I, would, I think it would be wrong in this House for us to not mention that. But I do agree with Public Health England, who have recommended that e-cigarettes are used um, in area, uh, not covered in the smoke-free legislation and that organisations do not include them in their smoking policies. Yes, we do not know the full extent or the medical effects, but we do know that for a majority of people, they are the only way to stop smoking, and they are a far better alternative. In addition, statistics show that people rarely start on e-cigarettes. They use them as a way of breaking their cigarette addictions. So it is important to remember that to tackle smoking effectively, we need a prevention strategy as well as one to help people quit smoking. Dr Andrew McEwen, Executive Director of the National Centre for Smoking Cessation and Training, stated that switching from tobacco to e-cigarettes substantially reduces a major health risk. And I do today urge the Minister to push the case for a nice review, which currently is at odds with Public Health England on this topic. There have been a lot of headlines, as I said before, regarding the worries of e-cigarettes, particularly amongst young people. However, the latest largest study, based on five separate sur surveys, gathered data from 2015 to 2017 and was from a collaboration including experts from Public Health England. And it showed that a tenth or a fifth of 11 to 16 year olds had tried an e-cigarette. However, only 3% or less used them regularly and they were already smoking tobacco-based products. Amongst young people who have never smoked, the use of e-cigarettes was completely negligible, despite the media headlines. It is also important to remember that they are restricted in terms of the minimum age sale and the tight restriction on marketing. The best thing that a smoker can do, let's be clear, is to quit smoking. However, the evidence is increasingly clear that e-cigarettes are significantly less harmful to health than smoking tobacco. That would be 
Now, for me, I'm pleased to take part in the debate because I'm a member of the all-party group on e-cigarettes, and I'm someone who believes that vaping is a safe and popular alternative to smoking. I've never smoked or vaped myself. I'm the oldest of five siblings. None of us have been smokers, and I put down, that down to the fact that actually both my parents smoked for um, all their lives, and smoking never held any charm or attraction for me or my brothers and sisters as young people. But, however, because my parents, other relatives and friends smoked, and I am married to someone who started smoking at the age of nine, I think I understand why people smoke and how it impacts on their lives. And when my parents started to smoke in the 1940s, people weren't fully aware of the dangers of smoking. Now we all know that smoking can kill or cause serious lifelong illness. And it makes me so sad to see so many young people today starting to smoke. And um, the member from East Harrow um, raised something about uh, mouth cancer and it reminded me that I lost a, a colleague in her um, early 60s to mouth cancer and she had seen her son only a year before, aged uh, in his 40s, die of the same horrible disease and I know how awful it can be. Um, Madam Deputy Speaker, I think vaping is important as a safe alternative to smoking um, for people of all ages and I'm, I'm pleased to see that for the first time the tobacco control plan actually focuses on vaping as a viable alternative to cigarettes. Um, as my right honourable friend has said, independent studies by Public Health England and the Royal College of Physicians recognise vaping as being at least 95% less harmful than smoking, and research by the University of St Andrews found that the cancer risk from vaping was only 1% that of smoking. There are now many other valid statistics from various bodies that support, support vote for vaping as a safe alternative for smokers, and they've been highlighted during this debate. I'm pleased to say that many of my family and friends and my husband have all stopped smoking and now use vape products. Many of these people, so dear to me, have tried to give up smoking in the past, but always returned to tobacco. I'm sure many other people across the whole country are as happy as I am that relatives and friends have made this choice. While the commitment to support Stop Smoking services is commendable in my experience, and I did undertake training to run smoking cessation, cessation sessions some years ago, it's very difficult for people diagnosed with diseases that may be smoke-related to give up smoking. We all know that ill health can increase stress levels, so a, rely a reliance on such a habit at this time is really um, something that can increase and would be tough to, uh, to give up. So being able to switch to vaping for people in such situations is very welcome. I wish I'd uh, been able to recommend people to switch to vaping when I was trying to help them stop smoking when they'd maybe had a heart attack because it was a very, very difficult time for them. I believe that the proportion of vaping and e-cigarettes, that the promotion of vaping and e-cigarettes is key to the government achieving its vision of a smoke-free generation as part of the tobacco control plan. I support the view of the UK Vaping Industry Association that Article 20 of the Tobacco Products Directive, which conflates vaping products with tobacco products, should be reviewed, and that restrictions on advertising, packaging and product size should be lifted. I do have a warning for the Government, though. Much of the attraction of vaping is that, after the initial outlay for equipment, it proves to be a, a much cheaper uh, way to um, enjoy the habit than smoking. So I seek assurance from the government that it will ensure vaping always remains affordable and the government will not be tempted to impose an excise tax which would for force up prices and give smokers less reason to switch. Finally, I agree with colleagues 
that the government must put its money where its mouth is if the tobacco control plan is to succeed. Um, I just want to say something about the government's proposed to e-cigarettes, which pretty much I think every member who's spoken today has mentioned in one way, shape or form. So the new, the new control plan uh, commits to monitoring the safety, uptake, impact and effectiveness of e-cigarettes and uh, so-called novel tobacco products. I think we must find a better term than that. The plan um, charges Public Health England with the responsibility to include messages about the relative safety of e-cigarettes um, in their quit smoking campaigns. And I'm pleased to say this is already underway um, and that PHE's current Stoptober campaign for the first time highlights e-cigarettes um, among the array of tools that smokers can use to improve their chances of quitting successfully. Um, as we like to say, Madam Deputy Speaker, there has never been a better time to quit this October. Um, I, I noted from a number of members several budget submissions around uh, e-cigarettes, which I will leave to my right honourable friend the Chancellor, um, including honourable friend the member for Coulter's idea around providing free um, e-cigarettes to, to pregnant women who, who are smokers. I think that... Um, is worthy of uh, consideration as an idea. But I also noted, I mean, the member for North Tyneside was not necessarily a fan of changes to the levies on uh, e-cigarettes. So I, I don't think it's fair to say that there is um, unanimity across the House. Just touching a, some more on PHE, if I may, they're already preparing their New Year quitting campaign, um, which, which we roll out in January each year, which they will reprise these very, very hard-hitting messages that we see on our television. I think it's through this sort of consistent messaging that we can hope to reverse the harmful, mistaken and increasingly widespread belief that, that vaping is no safer than smoking. I think it, it clearly is. Um, just, just touching on a, a number of the speeches, so um, the member for Rother Valley, uh, excellent speech, um, touched on, on health inequalities and how it disproportionately hits the poorest in society um, and, and pregnant women. Huge variation, uh, some 2.3% in West London to, to actually 28.1%, um, just to correct the record, in, in Blackpool. He mentioned the issue around dentists and oral health, which I think is an excellent point. Um, PHE commission training will continue uh, to, in, to ensure that local authorities and health professionals have got access to the information and training they need to provide effective help to quit and effective information that they need to, to work with their patients. He mentioned pharmacists, which of course he would, because he also chairs the all-party pharmacy group, I note. I think we'll be meeting soon. Um, and the healthy living pharmacies, which have been particularly, um, particularly good. Um, he also mentioned about government research, I think, didn't he? Uh, and PHE, again, is committed to reviewing the evidence on e-cigarettes on an annual basis and working closely with them and uh, Cancer Research UK and the UK Centre for Tobacco and Alcohol Studies to develop a forum and make sure that we continue to have that um, strong evidence base. Um, I think 